chapter name is cost allocation today we'll see cost allocation uh, broadly we'll discuss absorption costing variable costing what is the concept in terms of theoretical way and we'll do a couple of questions to know uh, know how it works that is the calculation parts when we talk about costing a lot of cost is a joint product and a byproduct what is the concept in terms of theoretical way and how we will do we will do a couple of calculations related to it um, in the last we'll see how to allocate the service department to the production departments this is generally we do for the calculating the cost of goods sold what is the concept and what are the numerical consideration that you should have uh, let's start our discussion. I'll give you one example just to explain what is an absorption costing and what is a variable cost. Then I will move towards the calculative part. Questions are pretty simple in our exams. Calculate product cost by using absorption costing. Calculate product cost by using variable cost. So if you have a concept of absorption and variable, then it's very simple to understand the question requirements. Uh, suppose your car is not working and you need to go somewhere. Uh, ideally, you will call your friend and uh, you will ask for the car, right? If your friend says that, look, uh, you are my friend, my car is always available for you, but as much you will drive, just put fuel into. So if you drive more, just put more fuel. If you drive less, put less fuel. This is what is we are talking about variable because variable is related with the production, output and consumption. But if your friend says, look, as much you drive, put the fuel into, but my car is from a bank. It is leased and my per day rental that I'm paying is, say for example, is $100. So give me $100, that is a fixed cost. You use the car, you don't use the car, you have to pay an amount that is a fixed cost. Variable cost is a cost which varies with the production. So when we add fixed cost plus variable cost, it is called as total cost, full cost or absorption cost. When we calculate product cost by using absorption, we take direct material, we take direct labor, we take variable overheads and we take fixed overheads. While in variable, only we take variable cost that is DMDL and variable overheads. So this diagram is pretty simple. It will tell you how to calculate product cost when we are talking about absorption costing. Absorption costing is more into DMDL, variable manufacturing overheads and fixed manufacturing overheads. Same box if you see, it just contain DMDL and variable overheads. Moving forward, period cost is a cost that you cannot allocate to the product right away when it arrives. We have to wait for a certain period of time, ideally one year, to allocate this rent, taxes and other things uh, to the product product in the last so that is a period cost and in this is here selling but so, uh, this is a period in variable will take your fixed variable and fixed selling so in long run all cost is the same cost but in if you see like short runs or a concept will change but if you see total of this is your cost right but just the allocation in terms of variable or fix will change I will read certain things for you. It's just I have told you absorption costing also called full costing. Charges product with manufacturing costs regardless of whether the costs are fixed or variable. Opposite, variable cost also called as direct costing. They only take in consideration the variable manufacturing overheads. When we say variable, variable means which varies with the production. If I am going to make 100 shoes, I need a leather equal to 100 shoes. If I will make 10,000 shoes, I need more material and so on. That's why variable cost varies with the production. Fixed cost has no connection with production. You use the facilities, you don't use the facilities, you have to pay for it. 
The cost of the unit of product consists of four types of manufacturing that is direct material, direct labor, variable overheads and the fixed overheads. This is what is the calculation part which is I showed you in this slide so it's pretty much simple. The cost of a unit of product consists of three variable manufacturing cost, direct material, direct labor and the variable manufacturing overheads. So it will not include your fixed manufacturing overhead that is uh, because of the school of thought is variable it takes only variable cost in consideration. Moving forward, a lot of our questions are based on this, this slide concept, impact on operating income. Of course, when we use absorption costing, it has fixed cost inside. So cost is should be increased. Variable cost will only take variable cost. So it will be in comparative with total cost or absorption cost will always be low area. So we want to see that what is the impact because if I will change the method, it will change my income, it will change my inventory. When we are talking about manufacturing, it is going to hit two things. One is cost of goods sold and one is the inventory, right? So balance sheet and income statement, both are going to effect from the method that you are going to choose. Lot of questions in our course CMA examination is based on this concept that if you use absorption costing, what is the impact on in, uh, operating income? If you use variable costing, what is the impact? So we will build two scenarios. One scenario is when production will exceed sales. This is one scenario when the production is increasing sales. For example, this is a warehouse where we are sitting. We are producing more and we are selling less. So means lot of boxes are here because uh, like our inventory is more because we are unable to sell, for example. So our closing stock value is huge because we are producing more and we are selling less. When we have more closing stock and this closing stock is under absorption is giving you a, a, a big value because absorption means fixed plus variable together. Generally how we calculate cost of goods sold, it's a very basic formula, opening stock at purchases, less closing stock. If this less closing stock figure is more, then your cost of goods sold is going to be less. When your cost is less, then your profit is higher. Right, so that's why we say when production exceeds sale, ending inventory expands under absorption. Fixed cost is embedded in the uh, in the calculation, so operating income is higher under absorption costing because closing stock is reducing your cost of goods sold. Closing stock based on fixed cost plus variable cost, and it will be vice versa. Like if uh, if production is less than sales means we have less closing stock in this room we are able to sell to smart so in that particular scenario if I take this scenario operating income will be lesser in absorption costing and higher in the variable costing so these are two scenarios one you have more closing stock when you have less closing stock less closing stock means higher cost of goods sold and a lower operating profit so if you understand this side the opposite side is this way. We'll do the past paper questions. You will see that a lot of uh, questions, lot of questions are based on this concept. Moving forward, we'll see uh, the comparison between two methods that we use. The concept behind this uh, is that which method we should use for reporting purposes to management. By default, all financial accountants who are working under US GAAP, they are following absorption costing. Means they when